So my job is to uh, work primarily on restoring wild salmon and steelhead to Idaho, where we used to have millions of salmon and steelhead. And now, in a good year, we have uh, tens of thousands. And in a bad year, we have even less than that. Um, wild salmon and steelhead have been listed and protected under the Endangered Species Act. Um, starting in the early 1990s, and all of our remaining salmon are threatened or endangered uh, with extinction. What is the biggest problem for the fish in the rivers of Idaho? The biggest impact to salmon and steelhead in Idaho is dams. We have, since the, 19, since the early 1940s, built eight dams between the Pacific Ocean and Idaho. And so Idaho has this incredible plethora of habitat. Uh, while the Frank Church River of No Return Wilderness Area, the Sawtooth Wilderness Area, the Gospel Hump Wilderness Area, and the Selway Wilderness Area, and all that wild Forest Service land, uh, the roadless land in between, and uh, rivers like the Middle Fork of the Salmon and Loon Creek, Camas Creek, and the Upper Salmon River itself, and the Clearwater, South Fork of the Clearwater, Locksaw, Selway Rivers, these are all incredible salmon habitat. But the problem is that the fish can't easily get to the ocean and they can't easily get back. So um, the biggest impact to Idaho salmon, no question, it's dams. So what is your view on dam and dams and what other problems are there? Um, road building and, uh, and over logging allowed sedimentation to go into the rivers and that's still a concern today. When a logging project comes along, we take a hard look at that and try to make sure that it won't allow too much erosion of sediments to go into the stream and impact fish. Regular old like agricultural pollution and temperature pollution are also problems. Um, temperature is actually something that's exacerbated by dams. And in the last several years with climate change afoot, um, we've been seeing uh, higher and higher temperatures in the lower Snake River and in the um, lower Columbia Rivers um, where well, the dams uh, allow the sun to, the dams pull up the river and allow the sun to heat up the water more in the reservoirs. So uh, salmon can't live above, or they should say salmon start to die above 68 degrees. Uh, they're a cold water fish and uh, each of the past several years we've seen, um, we've seen water temperatures in around 70 degrees or higher. What do you think the general public could do to help the fishing rivers of Idaho? Um, you know, the general public can get involved with organizations like Idaho Rivers United, and we're not the only one doing this work. There are other organizations, allied organizations, that do really good work. Um, the local Sierra Club chapter is one, Idaho Conservation League is another, um, and we partner with uh, groups called, like American Rivers, which is a national group, Save Our Wild Salmon, another national group. Um, so find the organization in your backyard doing this kind of work and get involved. Uh, we showed a movie last week um, called Our Two Hands. And the whole point of that movie is to say, right here, the responsibility to try to effect change for, for any change, any social change or any environmental change, it's right here. It starts with you. And, and, and we can all put our hands to work to help try to make change. Do a quick tour around and kind of see what else we got. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm just amazed at how many fish are here. We are at the Nampa Fish Hatchery in Nampa, Idaho. We are walking up to the head gates, the start of a trust life in a fish hatchery.
Shake it a little, you can probably see the feed. So that saves us a lot of time, so we're not up here every half hour or so flinging feed to these fish. Um, they stay in here till they're about three and a half inches, and then we move them outside to those large ponds. You guys can kind of see as you were walking up, there's three sections there. You're starting that top section just like this, it's kind of half screen. And then as they outgrow that space and get bigger, we keep extending them down until we get the whole race way full. We can raise about 70, 75,000 10 inch fish in one of those outside, about 60,000 12 inch fish. Um, our goal is for the year 700,000 to catch per trout. About half of those are 10 or 10, and half of them are 12 inches. So we're the biggest catchable trout producer in the state. What's that? Yeah, we've got some uh, false chinooks over there. They will be stocked out in the local lakes here. There's spring if you guys want to check them out. Little different species. Everything else you see in here is rainbow trout. Yeah, it's on your website you do the hose. Yep, the hot and cut throw. We get those eggs in the next month. And we've got a raceway of brown trout. Right, the farthest one we can see. It's difficult for this size to look in there, like, you know, the, the way the light is and right. stuff, and differentiate species. Those Chinook, you can see pretty good. They've got kind of a different body shape. We asked the director if we could put the camera underwater to get some cool underwater shots, as you see here and in some other parts of the video.
underneath. These raceways are brown trout, covered up inside this tent-looking thing. We got permission to go inside and, again, take some cool underwater shots. Due to wind noises, the audio was choppy, so we sped it up and got some cool shots of underwater. So I have here a sockeye salmon. This is a, a mount of sockeye salmon that came from Redfish Lake. Uh, I forget which year. We call him Red because he's red and, uh, and obviously Redfish Lake is named after sockeye salmon. They actually are not red for most of their adult lives. Uh, for, in fact, they're a little bit difficult to distinguish from other, other fish um, during their uh, ocean period of their lives and as they're migrating upstream because they're just the same color as any other fish but they turn red right before they're getting ready to spawn. It's kind of like uh, putting lipstick on for the dance. Uh, so they're uh, turning red to try to help attract a mate. And, um, um, <coughs> excuse me, guys, I'm just getting over a cold. Um, so one of a, in Idaho, we've got a famous sockeye salmon named Lonesome Larry. Uh, in 1992, Lonesome Larry was the only sockeye salmon to return from the Pacific Ocean. Um, and uh, if you can imagine, uh, odds of reproducing uh, and to continue a, your species existence aren't going to be very high with just one fish showing up. So Lonesome Larry's sperm, and it's called milt uh, for fish, uh, was cryogenically preserved and used uh, in years later to uh, 
help fertilize eggs for returning females in different years but that year he was the only fish who came back and so he was all alone ok should we do the other fish? this is a chinook salmon probably a, a three year fish um, and these fish can get even bigger and when they come back in the fourth or fifth year uh, or three ocean fish that's a fish that has spent three years in the ocean um, and then of course they come back at one and two years so anywhere between one and five years um, and uh, in fact you can find old pictures of fish that came back after five years and they're uh, they're taller than you guys they're like uh, four feet four feet long and probably weigh 80 pounds or something. Um, this particular fish returned to the Pissimeroy River Valley, which is a tributary up in the upper Salmon River near the city of Salmon, between Salmon and Chalice. Um, and so he would have had a pretty extraordinary life, born in that scenic mountain valley and uh, rode the currents to the Pacific Ocean. And then he may have swum as far away as Japan or Alaska, maybe both before uh, returning and somehow miraculously finding the uh, mouth of the Columbia River and then swimming upstream and uh, finding the Pasamoroi River Valley where uh, spawned and hopefully renewed the circle of life. So. Good, good. Yep. All right, so we're loading the truck today. We're gonna take some 10 inch catchable rainbow trout over the west side of the valley. Stock a couple of ponds over in Fayette and Weezer. Um, this is an example of how we load our fish. We have a guy in the raceway with a crowd rack pushing the fish up so they're in a confined space so we're able to net them. We'll have a couple guys loading by nets, handing fish up, some guys on the truck. Um, the truck's set up with an oxygen system and some fresh flow aerators to keep these fish healthy in transport. And once we arrive at those ponds, we'll net a few off at one pond and go and release the rest of the load at the other pond. So we can take care of multiple fisheries that way and provide fish in the most efficient manner that we're able to. Um, if you want to look here closer, you know how many fish per pound our fish are when we do it all by water displacement. Our gauge is set up in pounds, so we know how many pounds we have to load based on our fish per pound, and that gives us an ultimate fish number that we're putting in these ponds. So, yeah, we'll get some shots of the guys moving the fish through. Oh! Don't die, little fish! <laughs>
There you go, babe. school to go This is where everything starts out. We just uh, disinfected these raceways yesterday. We're getting some eggs in next week. Ooh. So this is our incubation setup. They come in as eyed eggs. So they're little fertilized eggs. They've got two little black spots on them. It'll end up at their eyes once they develop further. And we place them in these incubators. The eggs live in there for about two weeks here. Then they start to hatch out. So when they hatch, they rise up in that water column out through the hole that's there then you see the flow coming through and then we've already got screens set up so we've got them caught so they don't get away from us and then we start feeding them at about 23 24 days um like i said we've got pretty much all life stages here besides eggs there's some fish over there in that far bank that will probably go on feed in a day or two we go look at those we've got some fish that have been here since february right there 